Hey, what's up, VC? What's up, Derek? Uh, this is Steve, Harmless Rebel. Just wanted to do a real quick response to your uh, to your uh, question: Why music? Um, first and foremost, you know, for for those of you who have been subscribing to me or subscribed to me um, that haven't checked out Derek's channel, I'll put a link down below. But uh, definitely check him out. Um, his channel's uh, really good. I, I, I watch uh, one or two of his videos a week. Um, I pretty much always enjoy him, uh, and, and I highly recommend that you check him out. Uh, he's a great musician as well. Um, buy his records. I, uh, last time I, I checked, I think he had three available. Uh, Flyover just recently came out. Um, I haven't heard the whole thing yet. I've heard three or four of the songs. They've all been really good. I, I really enjoy it. So... Um, definitely check that out but uh, uh, thank you Derek for all you do thank you for entertaining us with your videos and your commentary and uh, introducing us to the music that you introduce us to um, other than that let's just kind of get to the uh, question uh, I actually recorded this a few minutes ago and it was almost 20 minutes long and then my daughter interrupted and um, it was a little bit too much so I'll try to keep this one uh, relatively short um, why music for me? It's just always been there. I didn't, I didn't really have a choice. Um, my father was a musician, um, not a per, not a. I, I wouldn't say a, a professional musician, but uh, he played guitar. Um, he would do jam, you know, jam uh, with friends and stuff. And uh, um, I come from a family that that was in the music uh, heavily into music. Uh, my my grandmother and grandfather on his side were uh, both honky tonkers in Louisiana back in the fifties. A lot of the bands that played on the the Louisiana Hayride, uh, my grandfather either played with their bands or um, opened for them in one of the clubs that he he regular he was a regular uh, a member of the house band uh, at uh, he was actually the member of a member of uh, two different house bands in uh, Lake Charles. Um, you know he got to play with uh, Hank Williams. He got to to uh, play with Dottie West with Loretta Lynn with. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who all he's spoken about. I mean, there were some Johnny Cash he's played with. Uh, his bassist actually recorded with Hank Williams and recorded with Loretta Lynn. So um, he's played with Tammy Wynette, you know. So, I mean, he, he really did have uh, having that influence uh, in our family going all the way back. It's just kind of passed on. He played guitar. My grandmother uh, did backup vocals. And, uh you know, my dad grew up hearing that. He picked up the guitar very early. Um, to this day, he still plays guitar. Uh, and that passed on to me later on in life. Um, I didn't go the guitar route until much later. I was in my 30s before I started messing with guitar. But I started playing drums at 17. Uh, lied my way into a band. I actually started playing drums because a friend decided to start a band and uh, asked if I knew a drummer. I was like, hey, I, I play drums. So I went out that night and uh, picked up a... a, a the classifieds in the Arizona Republic and uh, found a pair, a set of drums for a hundred bucks. It was a beat up, uh, uh, Pearl president drum kit in horrible condition. Um, it had actually completely fallen apart within about a month of me buying it. But, uh, that's how I got my start. And, and, you know, we split up a couple times, but our, our band was, uh, together, uh, for about a year and a half, uh, almost two years until I went to the military. Um, music kept on, kept going from there. I, uh, um, started collecting CDs uh, right after boot camp. That was the first time in my life I really had money. I came from a pretty poor family, but uh, started buying CDs. And uh, by the time I got to my first duty station in Japan, uh, I had about 150 CDs. I saw an ad for a DJ at, at the bass club, put in for it, and a week later I was DJing. Uh, and just CDs, you know, playing a. Um, some den some den and uh, uh, CD equipment uh, regardless uh, started DJing um, the money that I made DJing I was making 10 or 12 bucks an hour at that time all went into music and within a few years of DJing on the bass I had probably 3,000 uh, CDs uh, one of the other DJs the hip-hop DJ um, got me into turntables uh, I started messing with turntables scratching uh, doing mi uh, mixing hip-hop uh, that led to electronic music uh, I started DJing in clubs in Japan and got into that. Um, eventually got married, uh, kind of walked away from that. I still had some friends that were recording, and I got involved with some production and stuff, uh, helping them out, doing some hip-hop production. And uh, But uh, 
you know, just kind of left music from there. It's always been around, though. Uh, you know, like I said, I had about 6,000 CDs. And then I got, you know, that led to, to vinyl. Um, you know, I grew up with vinyl, uh, you know, being a kid of the 70s and 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, just not having a lot of money. We couldn't afford a CD player. I think my dad finally bought one in uh, 90, which, uh, I mean, even that was kind of an early adopter. I, I want to say 87 or 88 was the first time that it was... Uh, that uh, the average person could really afford a CD player. I mean, they were pretty expensive uh, up until that point. So uh, about 90, he got his first CD player. But even then, you know, it, we were still listening to the tapes and records. So, And actually, the, the turntable in the background is the same turntable that he's had since the early 80s. So, um, But that influence has always been there. He was always playing music. Um, he was real big into uh, classic country and southern rock. Um, so I, I grew up listening to that. And growing up in the military... I got an eclectic, uh, I got to listen to an eclectic mix of music. I remember being in Germany, uh, listening to EU, uh, listening to the Beastie Boys, Hello Cool J, and buying those albums, uh, you know. And then uh, as I got a, a little bit older, I started getting into, you know, the Motley Crue's, uh, or I'm sorry, Motley Crue and uh, um, Kiss. And I, w I didn't really get into Kiss too much at that point, but Motley Crue, Poison. Uh, but at the same time, I was also listening to stuff like Tony, Tony, Tony. And uh, uh, it was just like this really weird mix of music that I, I, and I've always had that taste, you know. You know, even now, I mean, you look right next to me right here, you know, and I've got some uh, Johnny Cash and Loretta Lynn, or uh, Tammy Wynette, you know. And then right next to that, the Sid and Nancy soundtrack, which is all punk, you know. And then I've got... Uh, you know, what else do we got over here? A little Ted Nugent, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Bread, Cat Stevens. I mean, I, I listen to such an Iron Maiden right here. Uh, you know, Killers, uh, Judas Priest. I mean, I, I listen to everything. Um, and and it's, it's always just kind of been a part of me. Uh, I'm also one of those people, you know, it's not records that take me back to times and places in my life. It's music, you know. Um, when I hear Eric Clapton, it reminds me of the night that I met my wife and it takes me back to that pizza, that pizza place in, uh, in Tokyo, uh, where we just kind of talked for the first time and, uh, Beautiful Tonight was playing in the background that ended up being the song, our, our first dance, uh, when we got married, you know, um, where I remember, you know, when I played Jar of Flies, it takes me back to the, the first time that we had, that we were intimate, you know. Um, certain songs just do that to me. When I hear Corn, or uh, actually Corn's a great example. Uh, a friend of mine had just came, come back from Berkeley to Phoenix, and uh, he was couldn't stop talking about this bass heavy band that he had just heard called Corn, and he pulled out this uh, demo that they had and played it for us. And I thought it was the worst music I had ever heard. I had never heard such a bass heavy uh, type of hard rock or heavy metal, and I just thought it was garbage. And then it was funny, a few months later, Blind came on the radio. I was like, oh, that's the most amazing thing that I've ever heard. And he just looked at me like I was crazy because he played it for me like three months before, and I thought it was horrible, you know. So, uh, but, you know, music really takes me back. You know, I'm one of those people, if you ask me if I have an album, I can tell you if I have it. I, I know exactly what albums I have. I can remember when I got them. I, I can remember why I got them. Um, you know, I remember the first time I bought Bob Marley Legend. Um, I remember the first time I, I, I bought or heard Led Zeppelin or Kiss. Or um, I remember my first Tool tape. You know, one of the guys at school had an extra copy that his girlfriend gave him. So he gave me his old copy of Undertow. And I've been a Kiss fan, or I'm sorry, a, a Tool fan ever since, you know. Um... I remember the first night that I heard uh, any kind of uh, rockabilly, you know, and I, that's something I've ever, I've been into psychobilly ever since, you know. Uh, I remember the bands that I hated that, and grew to love. I knew bands I loved and grew to hate, you know. Um, so, like I said, it's, it's just always been a part of my life. I'm trying to pass that on to my daughter now. She's four years old. Um, she's already got a drum set, uh, uh, you know, and, and I'm not talking one of those $30 uh, junk drum sets. She's got a drum set that she'll be able to play until she's 13 or 14 years old, you know? Um, and, and I hear her down, I don't push her, but I hear her down there beating on the skins every once in a while. I want to go down there and help her with some basic beats, you know? Um, she's got a guitar. She saw her, her grandfather, her papa, 
uh, playing his guitar last time we were there and she wanted the guitar so we got her a little kid's guitar and she sits there and and works her works the works her fingers and and, and works on picking the strings and stuff so uh you know i'm trying to pass that on the same way i was passed on to me so um so that's why music for me uh, you know it's always been there um I've always had a love for, and it's it's going to be there until the day I die. So, and you know, if we're lucky, it'll be it'll be there past that day. So, um, again, Derek, thanks for the the channel. I, I do really love the videos. I've been watching your videos uh, probably for about a year now. Um, you know, I've only been a subscriber for about three months, but I was look I, I was watching for a long time before that. And uh, you know, I got to really thank you. Um, you've turned me on to a. Uh, uh, a couple of albums um, uh, and, and a couple of uh, bands that I, I, I never would have listened to had it not been for you. So, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way, but I, I got to thank you for that. But uh, other than that, uh, have, uh, I hope you have uh, good luck with the rest of your, uh, with the rest of your albums. I, I heard uh, the other day that you mentioned that you sold about half of them. I think that's awesome. Um, you know, whether I win this contest or not, I'm going to buy your album. Uh, like I said, I've heard a couple songs from it. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I, just straight up great job, you know, as a uh, somebody that, that plays guitar, bass, and, and drums. Um, it, it's a really cool sound, and I really dug it. So, uh, again, thanks. Uh, thanks, VC. Uh, take care. Cheers.